Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How are you all doing? <coughs> Let's get situated here. Just a second. Yesterday was a rough day. <coughs> so, my father's car had been broken. I'm going to give you guys a testimony. And then I'm going to share some an interesting couple of verses with you. So my father's car had broken down, had been down for a while, and then he broke his leg. I told you guys about this. And he had been laid up out at my mom's place for quite a while. And there's another part of the testimony I'm not going to share just yet uh, that ha has happened concerning this. It's actually a miracle on behalf of God. But I'll tell you the part about the car. So anyway, I'm in the process of looking for a car for my daughter. <clears throat> and so we're trying to pull all the resources we have to do that. Uh, to try to get her a good vehicle and get her into something she doesn't have to mess with anymore. The whole saga with this uh, garbage <laughs> Volkswagen Jetta that she bought is hopefully about to come to an end. Um, she has my white Silverado up there now because uh, she needed the four-wheel drive uh, for the snow and everything. But my father needed one, and it got to the point now where he's, he's up and around, and he's moving around and walking and everything. Almost 80 years old, still kicking. And he needs another vehicle. It still has doctor's appointment and stuff like that. So the time came, because we have some weather coming in. I was like, well, tomorrow's a great day. This was yesterday. Tomorrow's a great day to go and to look. And we picked a couple. I found a little Forester, Subaru Forester. They get around good, you know, checks all the boxes. But what he really wanted was a small pickup truck, like a little Dodge Dakota or a little uh, Chevy S10 or something like that. Because he likes those trucks. He, he likes the older ones. Uh, less stuff to go wrong. Less electronics. So we got my mom, got him, and we took off. Because my mom said, I'll, I'm going to, I have plenty of money. I'll pay for him to get another vehicle. Because I can't. I've got all my money going into my daughter at the moment. So we take off and we go to this first car that I found. It looks really good. The car was very nice. It's amazingly clean. Get there. It's, yeah, looks good. Get in there, hit the key, fires right up. Took it for a drive. It was extremely peppy. It was kind of almost too, almost too good. But when I checked the fluids, it had a fresh oil change in it. But I noticed the dipstick was, and this is, uh, mechanics will understand what I'm talking about. Notice the dipstick was dirty, but the oil was very clean, which means somebody had not changed the oil uh, to the point that they had actually started to burn a little bit and darken the dipstick. So I, it was automatic, so I took the dipstick out for that, and I, you, mechanics, long-time mechanics, uh, know that uh, there are certain things you can check on fluids. Uh, you can smell them, and they'll have a certain smell to them. Um, and some of the old, old guys, uh, you can even... Uh, taste a little bit of it and it sounds funny but you can tell the conditions of these things and what's going on with them it sounds funny until you're initiated into it like you can um get a little bit of the oil on your fingers and you can smell the oil you don't smell it on the dipstick you check it on your fingers you can smell if it has gasoline in it and that would mean that there's a leak inside the cylinders probably a head gasket blown um, you can uh, get some of the transmission fluid on your fingers and you can smell it and tell if somebody's put some additives in it because hydraulic it's hydraulic fluid. It has a certain type of uh, odor and that does and you can also smell if it's burned if the transmission's been overheated. Same thing with antifreeze. you can get a little bit on your fingers and smell it and you can smell if it has oil in it. Uh, you can also and of course this is dangerous, but you can also touch a little bit on your tongue and taste it and taste the oil in it doesn't hurt the human being, but it's, it's just old mechanic tricks. I learned from some old, old, old master mechanics. So anyway, I checked the oil. It smells a little bit like gas. Checked the transmission fluid. It smells like gear oil. And I thought, hmm, there's a check mark I'm going to check later. Drive the car. Everything's good. Car runs out of gas. So I had to push the car to get it off the road. We're an eighth of a mile away from the car dealership. So right now there's tons of red flags. I walked that eighth of a mile, and you guys know I have a connective tissue disease, so yeah, that didn't go very good. Went down, got the guy, hey, it's out of gas, we're right here. He gets his guy, sends him up there to go get gas. 
That took him almost an hour, which he, <laughs> the gas station was just right down the road. I don't know what happened. So I walk back down there because I told my dad he, he can't walk. He's got to heal him from a broken leg. I said, stay in the car. We go back down there. The guy shows up, puts gas in it, starts right up. Well, he put five gallons of gas in the gas gauge never moved. So we got the car back, got out. I said, hey, give me your card. Uh, I'm going to call you. We still got two other cars to look at. And so we took off. Well, right away, I started checking my boxes. Fuel pump issue. Because it took a little bit. It had to crank for a while to start when I started it up. Uh, fuel systems in, in uh, injected cars are pressurized. It should have started up right away, but it didn't. When it was out of gas, of course, it had to build up pressure. But it took abnormally long. Because when you turn the key on... It should automatically pressurize the fuel line and start the car. It didn't. So there's a fuel pump issue in that car right away. The gas gauge didn't work. And those gas gauges in those are basically, a, it's just a resistor. It's a, it's a called a rheostat. So they don't hardly ever go bad. So most likely it's the fuel pump and the gas gauge unit on the fuel pump that's bad. So right off the bat, you've got to put a $200 fuel pump in it. I did a little search about the fluid that's in those. And it's 100% Dextron 6 um, synthetic fluid transmission fluid that should be in there. They put gear oil in there. It's an old mechanics trick to take a transmission that's going bad and make it shift a little harder. When I looked under it, the transmission pan was extremely clean, which means they had been in the transmission. So that took that car off the list. I was like, nope, somebody's done something to that thing. Let's not mess with it. Now, I'm hitting the high points. I'm just trying to skip some of the details. At the same time this is going on, my daughter is looking at a car we had found a really nice, seemingly nice deal. That was down in McAllen. So I'm, I'm, I'm communicating with her finally. I was like, okay, well, this is taking all of my attention at the moment because I'm having to navigate everywhere we go. Uh, I handed her off to my wife. So they're talking now. And they're communicating back and forth with me uh, certain details. So we take off to go look at another one all up in North Austin. And if you guys know anything about Austin, Texas... Everywhere you go in Austin, Texas is a nightmare to drive because traffic is horrible and it's nonstop. Most Texans know not to even go through the center of Austin at any time during the daylight hours. If you're on a motorcycle, you especially don't go through downtown Austin. It's just too, the traffic is, and there's no reason for it to be that way. Anyway, we go to the next car. It was a 2009 Subaru Forester. Very, very nice car. It was an old fleet vehicle. Perfectly maintained. This car was loaded. It was a really nice car. They had just gotten the car in and sold it the same day. And they had sold it a couple hours before we got there. So that took that off the list. Now both of those cars were a little bit higher in the price range we were looking at. We were trying to stay below 7000 And if you know anything about the Texas car market, it's kind of hard to find a good car below $7,000 in Texas. So we'd given up, we were defeated, we headed out, we made it back around to Lockhart off the Highway 130, which is the toll road here, and we're eating. We stopped at Kentucky Fried Chicken and we're eating. And it just hit me, let me check Craigslist real quick. Sometimes small dealerships post on Craigslist, and sometimes you can get lucky and find a good deal. I thought, well, let me look one more time while we're up here, maybe we can find something. Now this whole story I'm telling you, is to show you how the Lord works. Now, there's other stuff to this I'm not sharing, it's showing how the Lord works, but this is the most important thing I want to share with you. <sighs> the first, I put my search criteria in on Craigslist. You, know, you can program filters. The first ad that pops up is a 99 uh, GMC Sonoma. If you guys know anything about those trucks, and mechanics will know, most of those trucks came out with a V6 that has a four-cylinder in it, which is what he wanted. It's automatic, which is what he wanted. Extended cab, which is what he wanted. It had 97,000 miles on it. The truck looked perfect, and it was under 7,000. I showed it to him. I was like, let's go look at this. It's just over in North San Antonio. So we made our way back, and it was a nightmare in traffic, especially going through San Marcos. That's another place you watch out for, and especially at the end of the day. And it's it's going that direction. It's getting late afternoon, about to go dark. We made it over there. It's a little dealership. We pull up. There's the truck, and it looks exactly like in the end. I walk over and look at it. This truck is pristine. Now, you have to understand, 
Those little Chevy trucks in Texas, they don't last. Number one, they don't last. He had just put the ad up two hours before. Number two, those trucks are so popular, but down here, you don't find tr those trucks like that. We got in it and drove it. This truck, it was almost as if maybe a little old man or a little old woman owned it. They only drove about 5,000 miles a year and never did anything with the truck. They never opened the third door to, to get to the back. The jack had never been out of it. I, I always checked that. Those are little things you can tell if somebody's been in the vehicle. Open the hood. The hood, the engine had not been washed. But there was also no dirt in there either. Like they had, you know, somebody who drives normally on the highway, you get that really nasty road dirt in there. Or somebody who drives down dirt roads in that. This truck had never been off city streets, it looked like. It ran like brand new. It drove like brand new. Everything worked. I mean, it, it checked all the boxes off for my dad. It was exactly what he was looking for. You just don't find stuff like that down here in Texas. The car market is really weird here in Texas. Oklahoma, Kansas, you know, Missouri. Yeah, places like that, you'll find stuff like this. Not, not here in Texas. And it had just been up two hours before. We get there and we go in to talk to the people. The Christians. Crosses everywhere. Super nice, super quiet, super laid back people. We go out there, we do the paperwork, we buy the vehicle. It's exactly what he wants. Buy the vehicle. Guy's like, hey, God bless y'all. Appreciate y'all. It's all his business and everything. It's like, brother, we appreciate you being here and staying open in the dark for us to be able to come up and look at this. This is exactly what we were looking for. I mean, a brother and sister in Christ running a car dealership, and they had exactly what my dad wanted. The blessings of God were poured out. I made sure to remind my dad, too, this is the Lord pouring his blessing out on you right now. So I hopped in there, and me and him, I got in there, we drove back, and it set the cruise. The thing ran like a champ. It just is exactly what he wanted. The mercy of God knows no limit. And even on little things like that, he will pour his blessing out on stuff like that. Now, at the same time, other stuff's going on, too. While we're doing that, my daughter found another car. It's funny enough, we're going to be right next to that dealership today. And it checks all the boxes off for her. The Lord is always active in our lives. He's always watching over. And these things that he does like this. Now, a lot of people will say, well, that's a material thing. That's inconsequential. But what is he going to do because of these things? Because he doesn't just do stuff in singularities. What he's doing here is also going to do other things. Now, again, there's stuff I haven't shared with you. Other stuff that's happening because of these events or these events happening because of those things involving this. Certain eyes of certain people have been opened because of this situation and because of other situations around this. Some admissions have been made. Some repentance has come out of this. The Lord knows what he's doing. I'm going to share some of that in another video. The Lord knows what he's doing. And I'm so privileged that I get to see it happening. And it's amazing. And I, and I got to talk. I got to say, you know, now you see what I was saying. Now you see exactly because the Lord used other people to show him. It's amazing. Bridges that were burned down and tore down are now being reestablished. That's the work of God. That's the work of God. We can never discount or write off what's going on with other people until the Lord has written them off, until the Lord has blinded them and, and be done with them. We always have to be watching and ready. My, my best friend, you know, what happened, the Lord intervened on his life. His doctor told him, if, if your truck had not broke down that day and you fell on the ground and those people pulled out and helped you in the middle of that intersection and got you to the hospital, he said, you'd have gone home and gone to bed and you wouldn't have woken up the next morning. That's how close he was to death. And now he's doing, he's doing so much better than what he was doing. And he's moving forward and getting better. And this has just been in the last week. And the Lord is intervening. Um, my daughter's heart is being softened by the Lord through a series of incredible situations, some of them very negative, involving her specifically, and the Lord softening her heart when she didn't want anything to do with Christianity. Certain words have come out of her mouth that tell me that maybe she's reconsidering her stance. 
The Lord offers repentance to anybody and everybody. We can never give up until the Lord has given up. Now, again, like I said yesterday, sometimes you got to just step back and put them in the Lord's hands. All right, you're in the Lord's hands now. I can't deal with you. I don't know what to do to make this change for you. You're going to have to go and you're going to have to go before the Lord and he's going to have to work on you. But he will do it. I had to do that in this particular situation. No, nope, you're in the Lord's hands. He'll show you. Don't worry. I even said it to one person in this situation. I said, he'll show you. He'll show you exactly what I'm saying. Just watch. And he did. He allowed me to see it real time. And it was amazing. And there was admittance on the other person's part. Yeah, the Lord did. He opens eyes. He changes hearts. He brings people to repentance, to knowledge and understanding. And it is a glorious thing to witness when you get to see it with your own eyes. Glorious. And I'm telling you, telling you this from my personal experience, real time, just this last week, things that are happening, why I'm so wore out and exhausted today. But we're still going because it's worth it. It is incredible that if you will just believe, and a lot of people say they believe, but they don't, they still doubt God almost. If you would just believe, all things are possible. With God, and that brings us to our verses today, our scripture. We're in Mark 9, and we're going to go five above. One, two, three, four, five, verse 18. Watch this. Mark 9, 18, and wherever it seizes him, it throws him down. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not. So this is a father whose son is being tormented by demons. Verse 19, he answered, him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? So Jesus is, sounds like he's a little frustrated here. He's like, what is wrong with you? But see, you remember the Lord had come to a different place. He came to a greater understanding and a, gave, a greater appreciation of us and what we go through because we do lack faith, and, but he had compassion on us. Bring him to me, verse 20. Then they brought him to him. And when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming at the mouth. So he asked his father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood. Demons got him as he was as a child. Verse 22, and often he, was thrown, he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Look at the plea. Lord, please help us. Here's Jesus' most incredible response and the most incredible response back to Jesus. Verse 23, Jesus said to him, If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. I get tears reading this because that's every one of us. Lord, I believe Help my unbelief. Now the Lord was a little impatient with him. Oh, faithless generation, how much longer do I have to be here to have to deal with you? But look what happened. His compassion was stirred up by this father who was like, Lord, I do believe, but to help my unbelief, help where I'm lacking. Verse 25, when Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to a deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. Then the spirit cried out, convulsed him greatly, and came out of him. And he became one as dead, so that many said, he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he rose. See, our Lord has life within him. And when he had come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could we not cast it out? Jesus said, so he said to them, this kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. Which is why Jesus was always in a state of prayer and fasting. Jesus understood and knew they wouldn't have been able to take this demon out. They had a lot more preparation to do to take this demon out. Of course, the Lord, has, he's a little different, but he understood. And he got to see the faith contained within the people. And this confession, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. 
This man believed, but he also understood that he was lacking. Lord, I believe, help me, have compassion on me, please. And I have to say that to the Lord. Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. I doubt. Help my doubt. Help me to not doubt anymore. And then he shows me stuff like he's been showing me the last couple of weeks, seeing the change in people real time, watching him work real time. What in the world would possess me to go back and look on something that I didn't want to do because it had already been a rough day? And only two hours before, the perfect vehicle he was looking for was now there. And I had been looking through there for a week and found nothing. And yet there it was. And we go there and it was a brother and sister in Christ that had their own car dealership. Amazing. That's the providence of God. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. I was seeing hearts being changed in other people. The Lord warning others. I mean, sometimes he's got to put us in a place. He broke my dad's leg for a reason. And I'm seeing the fruition of that. He put my buddy, my best friend, put him on the ground in the middle of an intersection. Maybe he's gone through a lot of suffering, changing his heart. He's calling out his people. I'm, get, I'm getting to witness it real time, and I'm getting to confess it. That was the Lord doing in your life. That was direct intervention by the Lord. And there are still people today that don't believe. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Show me what you're doing, that I may confess it to them that you're doing it to. And have their eyes opened. My best friend, when I told him that, he immediately looked down and looked away. He knew. The Lord's working on his heart. My father, when I told him, I told you the Lord would show you. He's showing you. Your leg was broken for a reason. Not not some for you, but for others too. I see it. And he has blessed me with uh, the privilege of being allowed to see his work happen. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. I can't not believe. After seeing the things I'm seeing, after seeing the circumstances, how these things are unfolding, and to most people it seems like it's something inconsequential and, and unattached to this, I see exactly the opposite. I see situations that should have never happened. Just by the law of averages, should have never happened, and yet here they are. <laughs> I'm seeing the hearts of enemies being softened and them coming together. I'm seeing the minds of those who were set on a certain way being changed. And it is glorious and marvelous in my eyes. And I can't help but confess it to you guys. Because not only are they being changed, I'm being changed. Not only is their unbelief being helped, my unbelief is being helped. And God gets all the glory. Jesus Christ gets all the praise and they would get all the worship. Don't look for the earth-shaking, sky-rending, bright light-showing miracles. You're never going to find the one you're looking for. Look for the little things of everyday life that he's doing. Because when you look for those great big things, you're only going to see one or two in your lifetime. Because you don't know what to look for. But those little things, you're going to see dozens of them every day. And you'll get a much better understanding of just how intimate and how, how ingrained he is in your life as a believer. And what he's doing every day in all the people around you. And it can be a look or a statement or a word. It can be a greeting. And it'll show you, wait a minute. That person's heart's been changed. The Lord's working on them. It can be just a, a passing statement that I tell you the Lord's working on them and I get to see it. What a privilege and a miracle to get to see him working. He doesn't show that to everybody. So my confession today to all of you, don't look for, stop looking for the little things or the big things. Look for the little things. The little blessings that he does every day. How I shouldn't have been able to get out of bed this morning yet I'm out of bed. 
I was really having a hard time wondering if I was even going to be able to speak, to do a video today, because I was having a hard time speaking this morning. Yet here we are, and I still have another video to film. I'm in enough pain that would cause other people to want to be high on morphine all the time. I'm in enough pain that most people would already have maybe done something to themselves. But to me, it's inconsequential. And I don't exaggerate that. It is an incredibly high amount of pain. And yet I'm still going. It's not because of me. It's not because I'm tough. It's because of God. He keeps me going every day. He strengthens me. He makes me do endure. The pain becomes a non-issue. I'm aware of it, but things need to be done. And I'm going to keep moving. Because I get to serve him while I'm here. My day has come. The day that is marked already for me to go. Or in the rapture or death, whatever it is. It's coming. But while I'm here, I still get to serve him. So while I'm here, I'm still going to serve him. And sometimes the greatest testimony is the testimony. How the Lord is changing things around you. How the Lord is changing things in you. And how the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ saves you. It is a beautiful thing. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Help me understand more. Help me learn more. Help me see more. That I may confess you to those that I see those things happening to. Some of the greatest testimonies are the real, real-time events happening. And you get to bring it to light. That's the, the Lord is doing something in, right now in your life. I see it. Just like that. Eyes open. You never know. Somebody who is like, in a passing thought, is this the Lord working? Nah. And they push it off. And then all of a sudden, later in the day, here you come. And the Lord's were doing a work in you. Instantly change. You never know. You just never know. Because he does things and we don't even know he's doing them. He's working and we're not even aware of it. How beautiful to be allowed to see it. Some of y'all have this confession. Some of y'all are seeing things happening. And you're just standing over in the corner just watching with your eyes wide open going, when's my chance to make a confession? I'm watching. I'm seeing him work in these people. Wait. He'll let you know when the time is right. Some of y'all are in situations with your family that... Um, might be pretty negative. Just wait. Just wait. He'll put it on your heart. He'll make it known to you when the right time is to say something. And be ready. Be ready to pour it out. Because you might get the miracle, the incredible privilege of watching someone change real time right before your eyes. There, uh, other than seeing the Lord personally standing before him and looking at him, the only other thing that is great right next to that is watching somebody become born again with your own eyes. That is incredible. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Jesus made this wonderful statement. If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Faith of a mustard seed. Let us have that faith. He's changed me a lot in the last three three years. I have to I have to say that he has changed me a lot, and he has caused me to notice things and see things that I always knew were there, but never really realized. A lot of hardness in my heart, and he's changed that. He's extended bridges out to people that I've had falling outs with in the last year. Talking to one sister in Christ right now. A situation involving some others. It's beautiful. And he brought the, those two sisters out of a pretty negative issue. Showed them. Revealed to them the truth. Beautiful. 
those that are his, he will save. And those that are not his, if it's his will to get them, he's going to get them. We can never doubt the Lord and his power and his abilities. We can never doubt his authority. All we can do is be in awe of it and fear him and walk in faith. Let's pray. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, and glory. To lift you up and sing praises unto your holy name. Lord, you are doing an amazing work in your people today. And you're allowing us to see it. And it is glorious. I'm witnessing it in my family members. I'm witnessing it in my friends. I'm witnessing it in my brothers and sisters online. You've shown two sisters in Christ that I had a falling out with last year. Showing them the truth. And you bringing them out of it. Amazing. Stuff with my father. Stuff with my daughter. Stuff with my mother. Stuff with my brothers. My, my wife. So many things. My best friend. So many things. Incredible things you are doing. And they're, they seem so small and insignificant, yet that's where you do most of your work. The big things are cool, but it's those little things that make so much difference. The everyday things. And you've just done an incredible couple of miracles just in the last couple of days. Amazing. You said in Mark 9... If we can believe, all things are possible to those who believe. Lord, I would say in response, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Make me believe more. Make me believe better. Make me understand more and see better. Make me know your truth better. I see you working in my heart and others. I see you working all around us. I see you working around brothers and sisters out there. And I hope they see it too. And my prayer this morning <laughs> is not only give you glory and praise, but my prayer this morning is that you will show you, my brothers and sisters out there that are listening the little things that you're doing in their lives, the little miracles and the little blessings, the little things that make the, the big differences. So that we can be like this father here. Lord, I believe. That's why he came to him, to Jesus. He believed, but he makes the confession. But I know my shortcomings, so please help my unbelief. Peter makes a confession. Lord, flee from me, a sinner. Yet he was an apostle. In fact, while we're praying on that, let's go look at that verse, actually. This is a great, another great testimony. Luke 5, 8. Oh, it looks like it's in Matthew, too. Luke 5, 8. Luke 5, 8, when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. And yet he was called to be an apostle. Depart from me, Lord. Flee from me. I am a sinful man. What a confession. What a confession for us to What a confession to, to say, Lord, flee from me. I'm sinful. I believe, but help my unbelief to for us to know the reality of ourselves. And you reveal this to us. You show this to us. You make us aware of these things. A lot of people out there today. They doubt. Have I uh, offended the Holy Spirit? Have I blasphemed the Holy Spirit? Am I really saved? Am I struggling? Well, if you have those doubts, then no, you haven't done those things. The fact that you're aware of it shows that you are in the right place. It's those who don't think they have that have the problem. 
that those, those who don't think they have any shortcomings that have the problem, th what's the greatest faith? The greatest faith is, is in the one who knows they have the problem and admit it, knows they're struggling and have shortcomings and admit it. We see this right here. One of the, one of the greatest apostles, Peter, the leader of the apostles. Lord, flee from me. I am a great sinner. Don't even look at me. This father, Lord, I believe. I came to you because I believe. Because I know you're a man of great authority. Help my unbelief. Lord, help our unbelief. We thank you for your mercy, for the grace that you have showered us with, for this incredible salvation you have given us, for looking at us and regarding us even though we fall short, having compassion on us, that we should be called the sons of God, that we should have this wonderful gift. And how do we, how do we waste it? Because we don't stop and consider it. We do, we do things like mock you on videos of um, taking your word and twisting it to try to make it mean something else. All this, excuse me, all this date setting and all these um, false doctrines that people are making up just because they don't like the truth. And this salvation is right here in our, right here in front of us and we're pushing it to the side and doing all these dumb things with it. Lord, make us to serve you. Make us to be the way you want us to be. Make us to follow your will in our lives. Make us to believe and help our unbelief. Forgive us. For we are sinners. We love you, Lord. And we thank you so much for these amazing blessings that you have poured out on us and continue to pour out on us every day. We give thanks. I give thanks for the little things because it's the little things that make such a big difference. It's the little things that have the most incredible impact. I look back on my life and I see all the times you were governing everything that happened in my life, putting me in situations that just were incredible. Little things that didn't seem to mean nothing. had the greatest impact on my life. Make us all to look back and regard those things. Make us all to stop and consider and to count those blessings because they are the wonderful, wonderful work you were doing in this world every day. Sure, you flooded the world. Incredible event. That was thousands of years ago. Saving somebody from a disaster when they should have died in it. It's a wonderful work of your hand bringing a family member or a friend around to salvation. What is the wonderful work of your hand? Let us declare those things too. Helping find a reliable vehicle when we couldn't find one in a market that doesn't support that kind of criteria for vehicles. And you made it happen. Let us count those little things. Let us regard those little things and recognize and acknowledge and give praise and honor and glory where it is due in those little things in life. Give thanks in all things. Make us to believe. And as a consequence of that, make us to walk in grace towards others. And to bless those who need a blessing. In your name, so that you get the glory. Father, we thank you for your mercy and grace. We thank you for your great love. I can't give thanks enough for this. And to a lot of people, it seems pretty generic, but I see it from a whole different angle. It is very important. And if we can learn to recognize that, and if we can learn to acknowledge that, what, what more, how much more change can happen? It is exactly like you said, the kingdom of heaven doesn't come with observation. It rises in our hearts. And I witness that happening right now. In my heart. And in the hearts of others. 
and you have allowed me this unique opportunity to share it with others here on this video and in my personal life. To bring those things to, to vocalize them in that they can hear it because you're already working on their conscience. And those words may just have a profound effect on those people. What a glory. And when they change, I get strengthened. When I get strengthened, they get strengthened. It's just such a beautiful thing. Because the consequence of following our God is it's nothing but blessings. It's an incredible honor. Thank you for that honor. In your name, Lord Jesus Christ, we bless you, praise you, honor you, and glorify you. And in your mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for joining me for daily prayer. I had to cut it short because I could have kept going. It just... It's one of those times where you get into praising and you get into uh, recounting those things. You just can't help but give thanks. You can't help but express it in words because our languages don't have the right words for this to express it properly. If I knew how to speak Hebrew or Koine Greek, I'd probably say it like that. Then nobody would understand what I was saying. But it is remarkable to see what's going on today. And to have him bring it down to a fine point and go look, look at the little things. Because those are the things that are going to make the difference. And now you have an opportunity to confess and get them thinking. He uses every one of us in that way. And people change. And God gets the glory. I love you guys very much. I thank you all for watching these videos and joining me in these prayers. And I hope these things are helping you guys. I bless you all richly. I pray Jesus Christ blesses you richly. I lift up those two people at that car lot, that brother and sister in Christ. May the Lord has blessed them greatly. May he continue to do so. I'll see you guys in the next video.